Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Johnny's Interactive with me, Benis Abubedu, coming to you live from Digital Address, GA0993341 here in Kukumlimli, Accra, also transmitting on DSTV Channel 421 and Go TV Channel 144. This is the show where we mirror your views to the rest of the world. And obviously, yes, we'll be talking about that media encounter yesterday. The Media Foundation for West Africa has done some assessment rated questions by some journalists as very good, others very poor. We'll be bringing you all that, plus taking your comments on them. And also, it's been four years since we lost Komla Dumo, our very own. And it's a Thursday, so why not do a throwback on him? We find out from you what is your most memorable uh, thought or that experience you ever had with Komla Dumo Plus. We'll be showing you our video of the day. So let's start off with the media encounter that happened yesterday, an interesting one, wasn't it? Well, the Media Foundation for West Africa says some questions were very good, others very poor. I'm going to start with the good questions that were asked. I take it that the, given the size of the economy, uh, you couldn't have addressed all issues in your opening statements. And so I take it that the issues you raised are on your priority list. However, there's one issue I find not addressed in your address, which I think without it can bring every plan of yours to naught, is this issue of security. Um, in 2014, a young man known as Alema was alleged to have joined ISIS. In fact, his family confirmed that story. In 2016, a security expert revealed on GBC24, in fact, he showed us evidence of how some members of ISIS were getting in touch with young Ghanaians. Just a couple of days ago, the Ghanaian police arrested some persons with seven grenades. You didn't address that, Mr. President. How safe are Ghanaians under your watch? Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Mr. Yeah. President. Yes. Um, I'd like to find out how you could have come to the conclusion that uh, the Ministry of Trade has been cleared of the extortion allegations which were made, frivolous or otherwise, when indeed the Parliamentary Committee has just begun its work. What's the basis of, 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 of your conviction that the Ministry has been cleared of the allegations? Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, I remember the Vice President said, and I said many times, that we are building a modern formal economy premised on national ID, digital address, and mobile payment interoperability. And in February 2017, in your State of the Nation address, you said, and I quote, the process for a comprehensive national ID system and a property titling system will be completed this year. When we met here in July 2017, you repeated, the national identification scheme will be working by the end of the year as promised, and the digital address system will be functioning, end of quote. So two weeks into January, what is the state of the national ID and the mobile payment interoperability system? Thank you. Well, so there you have it. According to the Media Foundation for Africa, uh, GBC's Abdul Hain Moumen asked the best question, followed by Chrissy Pratt with the Inside newspaper and then Bernard Avla of CTFM, and we just showed you that. So here are your comments. The question is what you think about this assessment by the Media Foundation for West Africa, and we'll be going shortly to the reasons they gave for choosing these three as the best questions. But Wanda Solomon says, I think Bernard Avla did really well with his question. Um, and it was great, but seriously, I think Countryman Songo's question tops it all. It was apt. And then Enoch Tete says, I love the question by the journalist from Mankasim uh, who promoted his district planting for food uh, to promote employment among the youth. And Apia Kusi says, Media Foundation for West Africa has become referees 
why they didn't have become referees, why didn't they select their own questions, and do they know how corrupt society will be in the next 20 years? I don't know what you're trying to achieve with that, but Walanya Akwetia says, all questions were relevant, but journalists should be serious when they're invited to important places to have an encounter with top politicians. And Boo Dennis says, what makes the rest of the questions not best? All the questions were in one way or the other important. Were they all given the chance to ask questions? And that's one of the issues people had with that encounter, that a lot of journalists were there, but we didn't have a lot of questions because of time. Masood Paddy says, lazy journalist thick practice is the reason for asking questions like why foreign presidents are coming to Ghana and so, so on. And we'll be coming to that shortly because according to the Media Foundation for West Africa, that was one of the worst questions. Papa Abeka Wunchi says, they forgot to mention countryman Songo because uh, they also don't have any interest in Ghana football. So that's two mentions of Countryman Songo's question. And uh, Fatima says 99.9% .9 of the questions asked, okay, we're chaff. She doesn't tell us why. Uh, but Kwarisma Didon Papa says, what about Kwabno being of App FM? Sunyane Kashi wrote for me, fantastic question asked. And it's interesting because uh, the Minister of Information mentioned that everybody have the opportunity to ask one question but um the ARC fm journalist decided to ask two the second question however was rated worse uh, as part of the worst questions by the media foundation for africa interesting some will say he should have just stuck to the first one because it was a pretty good question lensford vosa says so can these oh wow belly full journalists ask the president where the 51 factors that his factories i'm sure you're trying to type he said we'll be ready by the end of 2017 for us to see how he'll answer that question mohammed zak says the journalists do not ask what we want it seems uh, like some of the journalists are afraid if this is what is happening there's no relevance in meeting the press that's mohammed's opinion and tiki says uh, I don't think the president can fight corruption. That's not an answer to our question. But Kwabike also says Countryman Songo's question for him was the best one. And um, so there you have it. And like I said, I'll be taking you shortly to the reasons uh, the Media Foundation for West Africa gives for uh, uh, judging these questions, either good or bad or best or worse. But now let's take a look at the questions that were judged was by the Media Foundation for West Africa. My name is Gordon Asaridiako from the New Crusading Guide. Happy New Year, Mr. Wow. President. Okay. Uh, we are in the 25th year of the Fourth Republic. And 2012-2013, you led the MPP to the Supreme Court, the petition. I would like to find out whether the live coverage, uh, the, the outcome and then the immediate concession or the acceptance of the ruling is a major hallmark of the 25th anniversary of the Fourth Republic. So please, I'm, I'm sorry, you, you have posed that question again. Okay. What, you understand from <laughs> what I'm saying is that we are in the 25th year of the Fourth Republic. In 2012 2013, you and two others went to the Supreme Court to petition against the election. And then there was a live broadcast, the ruling came, and it immediately accepted it. I'd like to find out whether you deem that one, at least the three, the petition, the live broadcast, and the, the acceptance, as one of the major hallmarks of the Fourth Republic. Please, are you clear now? I'm clear. Thank you. Thank <laughs> 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 you, Mr. President, my question is. Something unprecedented happened in Ghana here. That is during your first year. That is the coming in of visitors, mostly presidents. Classical example was the Emil of Qatar, President Macron, and all those people coming in. In your view, Mr. President, what do you think accounted for the, their interest in coming into Ghana, especially in your first year? Mr. President, there is this there is this school of thought that believe that incumbency is advantaged, disadvantaged, sorry, is disadvantaged. And I want to have your view on that. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for the opportunity. And I want to commend 
the hard work that you've put in Galam Sea Fight because it has really yielded results. Um, Mr. President, my question, um, and I want to refer to the question on Ghana Beyond Aid. Because we don't know or we don't have a vision of where Ghana wants to be in the long term, when policies are introduced by political parties, a lot of questions are raised about them. All the sectors um, have their own plans, but we don't have a vision as to where they rise to. Um, the US president have made very derogatory comments about us. People were up, up in arms, but um, I must say it's rather a painful truth because of the way we do our things. Mr. President, the question I want to ask is, when are we having a national plan? Thank you. Well, there you have it, West Questions, uh, according to the Media Foundation for West Africa. And if you want to watch that video again, plus the best questions that were asked, it's uploaded on our Facebook page. But a lot of people have something to say about this assessment by the Media Foundation for West Africa uh, with regards to the worst questions. Now, Kofi Odonko says, the president is performing well, so no important questions to ask. Bravo to the president, still the battle is the Lord's. Kobna Obo Blankson says, it seems only the last lady made a sensible question. It seems the rest were there to buy time for the president. So, well, even in the category of worst, Kobna thinks that the very last question asked by Annie Ampofo is you know, it's quite good. Nana Ofori Ike says, Nana in two from Peace FM. Nana, is your first year, uh, Nana, in your first year, something unprecedented happened, just repeating uh, that question she asked. Kwesi Boateng, IFR. So for he, that's his worst question. How does this question affect Ghanaians? And he thinks there was no sense. I don't know which one exactly he's referring to. Enoch in Jimmy says, question on the 2012 petition is improper framing uh, of the homo question was worse for me and that's it that question for a lot of people could have passed as one of the best questions but uh they felt the wording of, of that question on president akufado's interview on al jazeera about homosexuality uh, really affected how the president responded and uh, in japan kofi says how do you determine bad questions he thinks it's useless on the part of them. Okay, so on that note, let's just go to the Media Foundation for West Africa's website and talk about uh, the reasons they give for adjudging the questions worse or best. So let's start with the worst. The first one on the 2012 petition uh, asked by Gordon Asari Bediako of the New Crusading Guide. The Media Foundation for West Africa says, by far, this was the worst question of the day. It lacked relevance and context. And the second worst is um, the one about uh, presidents visiting Ghana, like um, the, the French president, uh, Macron, and uh, asking the president uh, what's accounted for their interest in coming to Ghana. That's, that was asked by Nana in three. And uh, the Media Foundation for West Africa says, while there may have been a number of foreign dignitaries coming in at the same time, it cannot be described as an unprecedented phenomenon. It appears to be a question that sought to provide an opportunity for the president to tout the achievement of his administration. Now to the third one, uh, the one on the school of thought uh, about incumbency and all that. Uh, this, uh, the Media Foundation believes, was not too clear and it lacked purpose and relevance as no context was provided. Now this one, quote, Mr. President, thank you for the opportunity. I want to commend the hard work that you've put in Galam Safe Fight because it has really yielded results, Mr. President. My question, and I want to refer to the question on Ghana beyond aid because we don't know or we don't have a vision of where Ghana wants to be in the long term. When policies are introduced by political parties, a lot of questions are raised about them. All the sectors have their own plans, but we don't have a vision as to where they rise to. The US president has made very derogatory comments about us. People are up in arms, uh, but I must say it's rather a painful truth because of the way we do our things. Mr. President, the question I want to ask is when are we having a national plan? Uh, Annie Ampo for Group Indum. Now, the Media Foundation says the background to the question lacked focus and what ultimately uh, was the question was factually incorrect because Ghana has a development plan as was alluded to by the president in his response. So, well, this particular 
information we have on myjoyonline.com, but you can also go to the Media Foundation for West Africa's website uh, to read more on uh, their assessment of that media encounter. Now to the questions that were adjudged best. The first one by Abdullahi Moomin of GBC on ISIS and security issues. Now this says the question was relevant and purposeful. The question provided useful background and context. It wasn't framed in a close-ended way and was asked with clarity. Now the one by Kwesi Pratt uh, of the Inside Newspaper uh, on uh, the cash for seat probe ongoing. Now it says this was a very useful follow-up after the president has sought to dismiss the usefulness of the ongoing bipartisan parliamentary inquiry on the issue of cash for seats. The question was clear and precise. Now to Bernard Avles of CTFM on um, the national ID and mobile payment uh, interoperability system and it says the question provided good background and context including quotes it was a question that probed the delivery of the government on key promises and its failure to meet publicly announced deadlines. So there you have it. But there's a lot more that the Media Foundation for West Africa provides. For example, they talk about uh, the manner in which the encounter uh, was conducted and uh, they talk about uh, things that could be done better and all that. But here on Don't Use Your Interactive, we are interested in your views on how that encounter went. We'll take a quick breather here. When we come back, we'll be doing our throwback Thursday and more. Please don't go away. It's a lovely Sunday afternoon here in Pretoria. The African campaign for the World Cup has pretty much begun. It started yesterday with Nigeria going down against Argentina 1-0. Today it is the opportunity for the Black Stars of Ghana yeah, to redeem yeah, the hopes yeah. of Africa. Yeah. I'm here with a number of Ghanaian fans yeah, who want to talk yeah. about their expectations yeah. for the game. What's your name, sir? My name, my name is Grant. What um, do you think is going to happen? I think we're going to beat them 2-1. They're going to take care of Australia and the, uh, Germany later. Sorry, sorry to Nigeria. They should just pick themselves up and win their next game. Africa, we're keeping this World Cup. Is this an African World Cup? Is this an African, African World Cup? It's an African World Cup. Anand, Anand takes the ball. He gives it left to the right. Quincy picks it up. Crosses it. Jan scores. Yeah. 25 minutes. 25 minutes. Okay, guys. Yeah, All right. Yeah, so this is what the fans. Minutes. This is what the fans are expecting right. in just a, a few hours. Kickoff is just a few hours from now. And you know what? I do work for the BBC, but it's time for me to show my true colours. If I can this over. And I'll see you after the game. Yeah. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Really lovely, isn't it? It's really sad he had to leave us that early. But a few of your comments here uh, for our throwback Thursday on what's that one thing you remember Komla Dumo for? And um, Isolatin Atta Stevenson said, Hello Africa, this is BBC Focus on Africa and I'm your host, Komla Dumo, and that's what he remembers him for. Abdul Razak Mumuni says, I still remember the very morning a caller called into his program and literally accused and nearly insulted him of bias. That sound by later became Komla's ringtone, R.I.P. Komla. Gabi Pat says his professionalism on issues uh, on uh, our nation, not bootlicking journalism uh, that is being practiced today. The boss player, you'll forever remain in our heart. Kofi Samson says, sometimes I wonder the kind crop of journalist uh, we have a Joy FM got the chance to listen to Kamala. Yes, we did. I did in particular. And uh, certainly, okay, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, Edward Miller says his finger he used in rolling the ball. I think that was his last live broadcast um, when he, you know, spun the ball on his finger. I think it was a basketball, wasn't it? And uh, Mali King says, hey, it's been four years already. Okay. And Jenny Fardo says she'll remember his smiles and deep voice and that's how we end this edition of journeys interactive i really appreciate your company here do make a date again tomorrow i'll be back at 12 with the news mm -hmm.